Hey, welcome back. I just got a quick video here on the principle of work and energy. Um, it's an equation that you're going to be seeing a lot of in work and energy problems, but it's really simple. It's just T1, which is the initial kinetic energy, plus the sum of work done from point 0.1 to 2 is equal to T2, the final kinetic energy. So you're going to want to use this equation for problems that have friction, which is a non-conservative force, and that do not have any change in potential energy. So like nothing to do with weight or, or springs or anything like that. And you'll notice that this is really just a reduced form of the conservation of energy equation, which would include a term for the initial potential energy and the final potential energy. But as long as the potential is not changing, we can just get rid of those and call this the principle of work and energy. Um, you might see it written slightly differently, just rearranged, where we just have the sum of work done is just equal to T2 minus T1, which is the difference in kinetic energies. And if you extend that out, or write that out, we're going to see that this is 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Those are lowercase v's for velocity. And you'll see that if we have a problem that has an initial or final velocity of 0, that the whole term which it's in is going to drop out, and it'll actually make our calculations really simple. So let's actually set up a problem here where we're going to find friction, and we're going to find the work done by friction on this box that's sliding across the floor with an initial velocity that comes to a stop after a distance of 1.5 meters. So let's just change the color so we can see what we're working with, and we have T1 plus the work done is equal to T2. So let's expand this out a little bit. We have 1 half mv1 squared for the kinetic energy plus the work done. That's just going to be the force of friction. We should probably label that on going this way, going the opposite direction to the distance being traveled. Uh, and that's going to be times cos theta s, where theta is the angle between the direction that we're going, the displacement, and the component of the force that's in line with that. So in this case, it's going to be 180 degrees because it's opposite. And this is all equal to kinetic energy at the end, and that's going to be zero because the velocity, the final velocity is zero. So if we bring the, uh, the 1 half mv squared to the other side, it's negative 1 half mv squared. And f times cos of theta, well, cos of 180 is equal to negative 1 this times s, so we can then get rid of a negative on both sides, and we can bring the s down to the other side. So we're left with the force of friction is equal to m v1 squared over 2s. We're going to round a room down there, so we'll just bring it over to the left side here. So the mass is 1.5 kilograms times the velocity, which is 0.25 meters per second it has to be in meters per second that's all squared and this is over 2 times 1.5 meters for s so that's going to give us a friction force of 0 0.03125 newtons so that's the first part of the question and if we also wanted to find uh, the work done by the friction force we can really easily do that that is that whole term sum of work done from 1 to 2, and that's just equal to the force of friction times cos theta s. So we have 0.03125 newtons times cos 180 times s, which is 1.5 meters, which gives us a final value for the work done of negative 0.046 875 newton meters, which is also joules.